Okay, what's up, WordPress Warriors? Uh, Patrick Gallagher, co-founder and CEO of GridPain. Today is Friday, August 18th. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, and I am here today joined by uh, my good friend and um, the first official uh, GridPain agency partner, uh, Zach Llewellyn. And he is going to be talking a little bit about um, what he does in, in his company and, and the people that he serves Primarily in Augusta, yeah, or in, in yeah. well, a lot of a lot of Augusta, Georgia, yeah. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about a couple interesting things um, that people should know, uh, specifically as it relates to things like security and HIPAA compliance. And so, uh, Zach, tell uh, tell everybody who you are and what it is that you do at uh, at Hypertech. Yeah, of course. My name is Zach Llewellyn. I'm the owner of Hypertech Solutions. We are based out of here in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, we primarily deal in managed IT and cybersecurity, but we also have a team that uh, deals within the software development space, which is where we have the the crossover into the the WordPress world. And most of the the clients that we serve are your small and medium sized businesses, and we're dealing in you know everything from uh, just small uh, small businesses that need to you know strengthen their networks and deal with their workflows to everything to much larger you know multi location enterprises that are you know, very buried within the, the, the medical and the HIPAA space, uh, to, you know, e-commerce websites where they're, they're putting out millions of dollars of, of product every single month. So we kind of spread the, the gamut in terms of, you know, who we serve, but in terms of that, uh, you know, we, we do cover all three of those principal areas and all of those things very much interlink in our, uh, I guess our, uh, flavor, you know, solution, which we go after servicing clients is something that we are, uh, handling their stuff across managed IT, across cybersecurity, and of course, across their their website with, with the software development side of the house. Yeah, so that that's actually one of the things that um, first interested me when we very first started talking, God, two, three years ago. Um, you've been you've been with GridPain almost since the very beginning uh, for, for a number of years anyway. And um, and you were one of the few agencies that that really goes deep down into actual, I mean, you guys are building a data center right now, yeah? yeah? I mean, that's, um, that's, that's way off the, the nerd deep end, I would say. So, um, speak, speak a little bit to that. Like m most people couldn't even wrap their head around setting up just even a single server in, in their office or anything like that. And you guys are actually building a proper data center in Augusta. Yeah. The, the, the whole way this came about is we were, you know, everything that we've, we've done along the way, it was, you know, we, we're trying to build the perfect stack. We're trying to, you know, I always go after that next level of just, you know, achieving perfection and, and what's doing that. So uh, it's been, I mean, it's crazy to think it's been probably two to three years since you and I have been, been talking and doing that. And, you know, when we it used to be, we had our own stack and we did all that stuff uh, and, and, you know, went around that. And then I discovered grid pain and using it and we've been happily using it to, to scale ever since. But then it was, you know, we were limited by what offerings we could do within, you know, what boxes we could have, you know, how fast is fast and could we start shaving off, you know, seconds off of, you know, what we need to have and just have latency be nothing. And we went down the track of like, well, let's, let's just R&D it ourselves. Why not? It's a fun project. We're all just, you know, we're all just a bunch of nerds. A lot of times that just want to, you know, keep pushing on it and diving into the weeds on just the really minuscule stuff to where, you know, sometimes, yeah, it does get to the diminishing return section, but you come out the other side oftentimes where it's like, wait a minute, this is a viable strategy to to go after. And then you start looking and it's like, well, what if we host it ourselves? What if we, you know, can eliminate that aspect of it and the need for it and then use the, you know, some of the big players like, and that the real solid players in the space like Vulture to, you know, give us that, that failover and really start pushing the envelope on what's possible. But at the same time, tackle some of the things to give us more control over, you know, the security aspect of stuff and the entire stack and plug in all of the, the really solid tools that, that we use on the cybersecurity side of things for people's physical networks to, you know, bridging that gap to be over into, you know, what is the, you know, the hosting space and doing that for our, for our own clients. So with that, it, it was, it started down the, the trail we needed to, we needed to expand it. I needed more place to stick nerds and have them working on the teams. And it was like, but what if I built my own data center while I did it? And so we started down this path and have been working very uh, diligently in order to, you know, design this data center, put it out there, connecting with anyone I can in order to, to learn as much as I can to just, you know, get a true SOC 2 type 2 data center to, you know, present new, you know, new challenges and, you know, certainly get new products out there to, you know, build upon what we've already done. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so for a bit of context for people who aren't aren't this far down the rabbit hole, in a lot of cases, what you're trying to do is if you've got if you have clients um, that you're doing managed IT services for, you, of course, have the option to um, to they've got servers in their in their office and you're going around and, and having your team members actually physically show up in their in their space. But but I think a lot of what drove this this desire to put to to um, stand up your own data center is that it's far more practical um, from a, from cost efficiency standpoints, from security standpoint, from basically every single box that can be checked that you actually set up the servers in your data center and then they're basically running thin clients on their end. Yeah. Can you yeah, speak, it, can you speak it, it certainly that? made it to where, uh, you know, for us, especially, you know, as our, you know, we started doing stuff in Augusta and then we started, you know, our, our reach kind of expanded more and more into where, you know, sometimes we have a, you know, we have clients that are two hours away and it, you know, does it make sense if their, you know, power goes out and we need to just do a simple, you know, small reboot on the server or something like that to have to have anybody physically go out there and deal with that. And yeah, you've got some tools to have full KVM and do that securely, but there's nothing that beats if, if you can walk into your own data center and service the, you know, the unit they have on there or have automatic failover, but then it, the, the problem compounds when you've got clients that are spread throughout, you know, London, South America, California, Oregon, it's, it's, you want to be able to really eliminate a lot of those, uh, those issues and have redundancy set up to where you could service the same stack that what we do is if we're standing in front of the systems and the way technology has gone, that's the future for, for the managed IT and cybersecurity space. And it, while it, it already is the future for, you know, dealing with, uh, hosting applications like WordPress, like, you know, full on stack websites, applications, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um, you just recently, speaking of data centers, um, so for those that don't know, um, Liquid Web is originally a, a Michigan company, and it was actually um, founded by some guys right here in Lansing. And you just started to get connected with Chris Strand, yeah, who um, he would he wore pretty much every single hat other than like marketing and sales hats at Liquid Web, um, but he built I think all three data centers um, in in Lansing, and now you're doing a really interesting project that has absolutely nothing to do with data centers and it's and it's more um it's more graphic design and ui development and so uh, i feel like i feel like that's going to be a really interesting um relationship for both you for guys. sure i mean we've got a, a, across our team we've got a, a large you know array of different skill sets and really what it boils down to is a bunch of nerds that just like to really build cool stuff and so uh being able to explore interesting projects like what chris has is always exciting to us you know doing the same things over and over again and you know it, it's fine to you know there's a lot of stuff it's just this is the bread and butter stuff you're doing you're setting up secure hosting you're doing that you're 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 handling the the day-to-day -day for people but something just gets you excited about going and doing something just completely outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. it I think uh, maybe two or three calls ago, you, you guys were talking about um, you had, you had gone, you had gone way d deep into the woods to try and solve a problem for a client and then ultimately sort of landed, I think pretty much like on, on a SaaS specific solution just to Shopify. So that'll be sort of, you know, heresy to talk about Shopify in the WordPress uh, community, but sometimes <laughs> WooCommerce is not the right answer to the problem. Yeah. And so you guys are definitely um, really uh, multidimensional and, and um, agnostic, I guess, in yeah. terms of the stuff that you work on. Yeah. It is all about finding the right solution for, you know, the, the right client. So yeah, you know, I know it's blasphemous to say it, but WooCommerce is not always the answer to the, the problem, but Certainly, you know, we, it's all about looking at each thing individually and being able to assess like what is the right solution for this situation and then applying that to there and using best practices and doing all the right stuff to to build it to where it it, it is everything it should be and not, you know, cutting the corners because it's like, well, this is just the easier way to go about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, so let's get uh, let's get a little specific for people. Uh, obviously, we've touched a, a bit on on cybersecurity, but, but again, one of the big ones that you're working uh, on all the time is, uh, is HIPAA compliance. And so I thought, I thought while you're speaking to that a little bit, what I want to do is um, just uh, pull up the first page here of, um, of results around this and see how many people are actually spelling this incorrectly. Um, and, and what, and just what an absolute joke that is <laughs> just internally between the two of us, how it's like, you'll literally see a page that's talking about HIPAA compliance and they'll spell it H-I-P-P-A half the time and then H-I-P-A-A the other half of the time. And, um, and all the while, it's just not clear to anybody what the hell 
um, any of these people are really doing in terms of, um, it just feels like a lot of box checking. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so while I'm pulling this up, maybe, maybe you can speak a bit to that and, um, and, and how it is that everybody's getting their rides pimped, I guess. Yeah. So the, what we found and I deal, my background is all in cybersecurity, my, you know, my degree, my certifications, all that I live it and breathe it. And a lot of the the stuff that we end up working with, with our clients uh, is within the compliance space. If you're, you know, you're trying to deal with NIST, you're trying to deal with, you know, HIPAA compliance, stuff like that. Each one of these there, you know, in this industry, we found there's a ton of snake oil. There's a ton of people that just peddle uh, incomplete solutions, or they're dealing with completely ads, you know, not even compliant at all solutions and stick the name HIPAA on it and people see it and uh, just go, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm HIPAA compliant and just throw that on there. In a lot of cases, th those companies, they can't spell it. They don't even know what it stands for. And they certainly don't know what all it entails because it's much more than just checking a few boxes and kicking it out the door. Even PCI compliance these days is much more involved than it once was. So when, when it comes to the compliance space, having something that you're, you're getting a full in-depth solution to is is absolutely critical. I attribute, uh, especially in the the HIPAA compliance space. Uh, I know everyone's seen the the old school uh, Pimp My Ride show where you know they take these cars and they're total pieces of junk and they slap some paint on there and stick you know spinning rims and some you know giant screens in the in the bumper and you know send it out and say this thing's awesome. Well, it's a lot of times how the you know the HIPAA compliant WordPress hosting space or just compliant hosting in general is done. It you know looks great on the outside. They check some boxes and forward facing it. It's got the little seal at the bottom, and it's like we're, we're HIPAA compliant. But if you were to look at the full, you know, gamut of what actual compliance takes and what all is involved in it, you'll see quickly. Just when you raise the hood, it's like this thing's a hunk of junk. This is not going to do what we need to do. And you know, push come to shove, and you get called on the carpet to actually show that you're compliant, and you know, being being able to show all the evidence for it, it's just going to fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. So we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of this, you know, like, like the, in this particular case, no, no knock, uh, to HIPAA vault for, um, for spelling it incorrectly. They've at least spelled it correctly, but you know, we see this, um, all the time is the idea that you can just land on a page and, and I can just, I can just sign up, right. I can just, I can just press order now and I've got HIPAA compliant hosting, right. Right. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, who, who knows what security precautions I've taken within my office, who knows what security precautions I've taken within my network and my device that's connected to this thing, you know, like, well, they've locked the box down and all I get is editor role. So therefore it's HIPAA compliant, right? Like you can just throw people's um, PHI directly on, on a solution like this. Yeah. Yeah, just that you know, to to have the the notion that you could just you know buy here and click this thing and buy this product and it just it suddenly just fixes all your problems is is absurd. Um, everything starts at the endpoint. It starts at the you know at the user level, and you could have you know the most rock solid server for hosting that that ever existed. You could have uh, all of the things you know on there with how data is transmitted and stored and all of that. But if you're accessing it from an insecure workstation from just something and it not be compliant, well then at that point. You, you know, you get your session scoop, you get, you know, people accessing those systems and then they've got access to all the other hosting and your patient data and everything falls apart. So to, to just say, oh, I checked this box and I did that. And they, they sell a product to it does not sell the full solution. So whenever we approach something, we're getting very involved with our clients to where I'm looking at every aspect of your workflow. I'm seeing, uh, you know, how are you accessing these systems? What does your network look like internally? How are you dealing with just, you know, things like, you know, just the basics of cybersecurity with how are you storing your passwords? How are your users being doing ongoing training, which is 100% part of what you have to do with HIPAA compliance with the ongoing cybersecurity training. How are you doing your internal vulnerability assessments? There's a giant you know, laundry list of stuff that you have to be doing at your internal network for your business before you could ever want to touch your hosting because it doesn't matter how good of hosting you would have set up. It If you're you know, having insecure systems to access it, it it's pointless. Yeah, exactly. Um, this, this, is, uh, this is one of the ones that... Um that I wanted to share here. So it's, uh, okay. Can you see, uh, can you see this? So they've, oh, yeah, actually this got it right. they've actually got it right on the, on the, uh, on the page here. And if you, if you search for, um, actually, if you just search for it, <laughs> it's literally spelled wrong in the H in the, uh, in the SEO tag, the SEO tag is, is wrong. 
but the uh, the page is right. And then and then again, you know, you just scroll down and you pick you pick your plan and um, and you're just off to the races. Yeah. And so um, so clearly this is not the right way to do it. Um, speak a little bit towards the idea of like how your engagements um, start with with yeah. you know, a medical practice, whatever it is. Um, and then and then we'll talk a little bit about Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. So how any of our engagement starts with our clients is, you know, we're getting on a call and finding out, you know, what's their compliance? What are the things they need to uh, have that, that give them, uh, you know, their solution? Like what's going to meet those standards for them? And we're finding out uh, everything about that business. You know, how are they, you know, set up? Do they have multiple locations? Do they have a single office? Is this 100% remote? How are you, you know, if this is a bring your own device set up, like hey, we're finding out all of those details when it comes to that. And then we're finding out, you know, what does their online presence look like? You know, is their site built with WordPress? Is it built with some other platform? What is the state of everything right now? And at that point, we are always starting off with an audit to find out just what is, you know, what's the temperature of what we have in there? Are there good practices that are being set up, you know, at this moment inside the office with online, with how things are respect to, you know, patient data moving around. And we are, you know, giving them a level set on exactly what, you know, the results are of that audit. And then at that point can you know, design a solution for them to get them to where they need to be on hosting, you know, compliancy with hosting and with their internal network, and then continued on there. Because with everything I tell them is we could set up everything to the nines and do all that, but it has a half-life. We are, uh, everything starts decaying from the moment you do that. So it is, we, it's something that we very much get plugged in with our clients and have ongoing relationships with them where we are, you know, constantly up, up leveling what's there, ch making, you know, changes as need be, because as, things get updated as new software things come out as new changes get you know pushed out to these compliance uh, setups in order to uh, evolve with them we're actively working with our clients and some clients I've been working with for 10 years and we've been uh, constantly it's like you know when new standards come out and new things come to the forefront and saying this is the new uh, gold standard in cybersecurity or we have new things come in our stack which we have all the time we're, we're playing with new stuff those things get applied and we're bringing it to it to where the relationship with our clients becomes, you know, oh, Zach and them, they, they have it handled. The guys at Hypertech have that stuff handled and they can begin worrying about the stuff that they do every day and we're handling all the rest. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a really key point um, that uh, people, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but before, before I started Good Pain um, at the, really the tail end of my, my agency, which I didn't really call an agency. It was, I called it a marketing and technology consultancy. Um, a lot of, uh, I was doing a lot of work in the HIPAA space. Um, and my wife is a physician and I've, uh, I've watched, uh, thankfully I've not had anything to do with that practice because, um, I haven't loved, um, some of the decisions that they've made, uh, as relates to how quickly they adopted different things that, that I knew that they should be doing. Um, and at one point I actually did feel like they were more secure than potentially a lot of sort of average offices that had gone um, sort of HIPAA because they had the massive um, rolling file cabinets where you, you spin the wheel and it, and it slides out of the way, you know, and it's like, well, you're going to need a tank and you're going to need a semi truck to steal these records, you know, like you're going to need a forklift, like, you know, if they had it all on a drive somewhere, I could just like walk over here and stick a USB in there, you know, but um, but the thing is, is that like, even if you could check a box, like to, to your point, even if you could, if there was a box to check and you could just say, I'm spending $499 a month and now it's HIPAA compliant, even if that were true at that discrete moment, at that crystalline exact point that you shipped it, the instant that you're no longer managing for that, that for them, the instant that you're no longer HIPAA compliant, you know? And so there is no, there is no, it's, it's like, there is no um, location. It's a vector, you know, yep. like it's a constant battle really um, against, you know, ever evolving threats, but then also just ever evolving legislation and compliance requirements and insurance requirements. And there is no just check a box and you're done. You know, even if that were true, it, the instant that you guys walk out the door, it's, it's, well, what the hell did you guys do with it after we left? <laughs> you know, so yeah. So, uh, so talk to me a little bit about um, my my favorite my favorite little analogy of yours. Talk to me about Schrodinger's cat. Yeah. So we get we we get approached all the time when it comes to you know doing compliance and, and setting that up. And oftentimes uh, the you know you get different pushbacks in there. But my favorite one is when people are like, well, you know, if we don't know, it's not secure. 
then, you know, we'll be okay. Like we, we weren't aware that that's the case. We have ignorance of it. And I think that very much uh, rings true in the WordPress space is people think, and I even saw an article just this morning where it was like, well, at what point is this just become ridiculous when it comes to security? And this, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, we're talking about even just the most basic things of cybersecurity. And it, it's, it's come to the point where it's like, well, why do I even read these articles if I'm just going to have to implement more work and do more changes and it costs me more to, to handle that. And I had always attributed it to, to Schrodinger's cat. And I, I've made a couple of comments along the way is, well, I'm just not going to read the security article. So I'm still compliant. And it, it becomes to where if you don't know that you're not compliant, are you compliant? And that's where we kind of end up taking the, you know, we're killing the cat every day. We're pulling the lid right off the box and saying no, or yeah, you've got it. And here's my evidence to back that up. So we are at that point, uh, we're looking at it. And so where our clients can know when somebody asks them, they go, well, kind of, they know they can look at it and say, yes, absolutely. We are. And here's my evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, and also with being able to track exactly what's being changed and looking at every single new thing that's coming out. I know the, the, the one that, that hit all the, the, the new stuff was talking about all the, the Intel troubles with people on those, those hosts. So it was immediately like, are these affecting any of our servers? Are these affecting any of the things that are going on? So doing active threat hunting and looking at what is the, the, the newest thing in, in the cybersecurity space and applying those principles instead of just burying your head in the sand and saying, well, I, I think everything's fine. And if I don't know about it, then uh, it's probably okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's, uh, like the first time you told me this story, I, I just immediately latched onto it. Just the idea that it's like, well, part of the reason that we have to do all of this exhaustive work and we have to peel back all the layers of the onion is because at the end of this audit, at the end of this initial assessment, before we actually get prescriptive, we're going to open the box mm -hmm. and we're going to see whether or not the cat is dead. Um, and so speak to what you would say is the average percentage of times that the cat isn't dead. I, I have my guess, just but but it's very very tarnished by I'm I'm just I've got a bunch of WordPress bias I guess into into yeah frequently and I, I guess dead. I guess it would depend on the scope of, of work but I would say nine times out of cat nine times out of ten the cat's dead uh, we we go in there and it's like there's some glaring stuff that it's like you're storing this how or, you know you have an RDP server facing the internet why. Uh, right. all of the stuff that is just the very low hanging fruit more times than not, we, we find something in there and it could be stuff that, you know, oh, that's five years old. I don't even know that was still out there, but if nobody's actively looking for these things to, you know, be life cycling stuff out and dealing with things that you just had hanging out on the internet that were, you know, sipping data off of something, if, if you didn't know that, because, you know, that's three managers ago, then yeah. at that point, you, you just don't know what you don't know. That's why everything starts with an audit. And that's why a lot of times there's when we're we're having that presentation of that with the the decision makers, they they get real wide eyes and go, Oh dang, we didn't know that was even happening. And at that point, taking the plan and, and putting that into action to to get people handled. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and it's the kind of thing where um, you know, magically it, what I've seen anyway is, is uh, in, in, you know, in contexts where, where there is actual true um, requirements of compliance and it's not just, well, we want to be secure, but it's like, no, no, you'd have no choice in the matter. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting how magically budgets open up once they see that they've got this dead cat, you know, cause, cause they can't, they can't unsee that it's like, oops. Yeah. That was, that was three managers ago. And I guess we probably should do something about that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah and, and oftentimes we'll get we'll get that response, but then other times it's because of a security event that we come in and start becoming uh, you know, the authority on that and being, you know, then become our client is after they've had an event happen and they realize just how expensive and how detrimental it could be to their entire practice. It's like, oh, I've been doing this practice for, you know, 10 to 15 years and this one little thing because I had an employee that went rogue could suddenly cost me my entire business that I've done. And so uh, that is a very real thing is it, you either get it to where it's like they they realize it and they can no longer say like, I didn't know this. Or on the other flip side is like they have something happen. It's like, well, what do I am I supposed to do to prevent this from happening again? Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. One of the one of the last people that I spoke to in this context because I try specifically to stay away from it, and it's part of the reason that we want to partner with people like you is so that when people come to me and say, "Hey, this is this is the thing that I need," I can say, "Okay, I've I have exactly the right person for you. I have exactly the right team for you." But it was somebody that was doing that was doing stuff in the home services. Um, industry. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by home services? Like, uh, you mean like tree trimming or like uh, gutter guards or HVAC? And they're like, no, no, no. Um, uh, like hospice nurses. 
And I'm like, that's not the same thing at all. You know, nope. that's not home services. Like that's HIPAA. And, um, and, and the person had no idea what I was talking about. And then of course they, they get to the question of like, um, well, is it more expensive? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, why? And I'm, and I'm like the liability. And they're like, for who? And I'm like, everybody, everyone, everyone. everyone. And they're like, like me? And I'm like, yeah, you and me and your client and your client's client and everybody, everybody that's touching any of it. And it was just such a, it was, it was just such a, unfortunately, like, uh, it's just one of those cringe moments that we see a lot in, in, in WordPress, you know, like, like the way, the way that people are just like, well, just use Jot forms, just sub it off to a plugin. And it's like, I see that. And I just absolutely cringe every single time I see that, because it's like, it's even, it's even more of a box check, you know, it's like, Oh, it's hosted on GoDaddy and we and it's stop forms and we've got an SSL. So so we're good. And, and I see that so often. And I think Calvin's done some, you know, he's he's done fantastic work and just blown the lid off of a lot of uh, you know, different plugins that people just blindly trust and just, oh, just throw a plugin on it and and do that. And realizing that you do need you as a an agency owner or somebody that is going in there to, you know set up stuff for your clients and doing that stuff, you taking, you're taking that responsibility. So when you're taking on that, that new site client, it's making sure that you're doing everything to, to what needs to be done to be within that compliance. You need to be, a, you know, assessing what that client needs and, and applying those, you know, the, those principles to it. And so that's where looking at your entire stack of what you're doing and not just throwing a plug in to fix the problem. Uh, because again, you're, you're increasing your, your attack surface area you need to be assessing all of these things to, to each their own and, and applying them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's like, even, even if we assume that a plugin is secure, and even if we assume that there's a flawless SSL implementation and there's secure communications and everything else, it's like, if the, if the website itself is completely hacked wide open, then they have root on all of this data and they have complete control of being able to manipulate the plugin to do whatever the hell they want to with it. And so it's um it's uh it's surprising to me that that there are these companies that are willing to have that much exposure. Like I can't even imagine being a WordPress plugin shop and just going like, "Oh yeah, I'll do that. I'll sign your BAA." You know, it's like it just blows. Yeah, I think I think it's a situation of like, "Oh, we'll just take on that risk inherently and and people and and I've seen that the in a lot of the the posts within some of these groups, it's like, "Well, we just, you know, at what point we're just saying we're taking the risk." Well, if you, I don't think you understand the gravity of what you're saying when you're taking that risk on and the amount of cost that you, you in terms of insurance, you better be holding if you're actually saying that because in the event you have something happen and then you get called to the carpet and say, this is your, this is on you. Well, then at that point, you risk losing your own business as a result of it because of something that wasn't done correctly. If you can't show you did everything within reasonable effort or you know within what is best practices to, to do that, if you're putting that, you know, that name at the bottom saying that you built this site and you're doing that and you're hosting it, then you, you need to be doing all the stuff to help protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, to touch on something that I saw recently where, you know, there's, there's been some, some uh, rumblings in some of these Facebook groups around the idea of like, you know, just, just how like zero comp, you know, zero compromise and zero tolerance, you know, and, and, and the idea that it's like, if it's not perfect, then we're, then we're terrible people. It's like, that's not it at all. You know, like almost all of, of HIPAA compliance is not even that it is just absolutely bulletproof systems. It's more bulletproof process. Yep. You know, and it's, you know, there is no perfectly secure systems. There's only as secure of a process and as um, as diligent of a process as we can possibly have, you know, because there are going to be breaches. There are going to be things that get hacked where you actually don't get sued into the ground is being able to go, yeah, this happened. This is how we know it happened because we've got these processes. We've got these checklists. This is our remediation steps. This is everything that we're doing. We're contacting people. We're doing reasonable disclosure. Mm -hmm. It's not about like, oh, we're we're perfect and we're flawless. It's we're working really hard and we're doing our level best to to to, to we joke about checking boxes, but to check every single box that we're aware. No. Of. Yeah. And and nothing is unhackable. Anybody who tries to claim that is an idiot. Uh, the, the thing is, is it's all about, like you're saying, which having those good processes, following those, knowing what, what to do when events happen and being able to have the proper logging to be able to have a true postmortem and you know, discuss that. And the fact is, is even these compliances, you know, are they're evolving. They're new versions every single year of like, this is the new stuff you need to be doing. 
And that's where, you know, it's just, just like years ago, SMS multi-factor authentication was just okay. And nowadays we're just like, absolutely not. Do not put that anywhere near it. And that's where people learn and evolve and new technologies come out to allow for things to become even more secure. So it is a journey. It's not a, a product. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell the folks uh, where they can uh, find out more about what it is that you're doing. Yeah. So uh, any of the information you want to find or just to, to reach out to us, uh, you can check us out at liveuptothehype.com. And that's where, you know, we've got information for exactly the offerings that we have. You can just hit us up and contact us. And certainly we can talk more about, you know, where your starting point is as a, as an organization and certainly get you taken care of in terms of anything you've got compliance or just, even if you just have questions in terms of like, how's a, you know, how should I approach something? You know, certainly I, I try to be as forthcoming and helpful to people within the community and within, uh, you know, the, within the, the entire ecosystem that, that have questions. Cause I think that the first start to any of it is getting curious to say, am I actually compliant? And then kind of taking it from there. Cause I think that's the, the first, as I always say, the, the first thing is to admit you have a problem and then being able to address it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I really appreciate you taking the time here. Um, I'm jazzed that, that we get to tell everybody about what it is that you're doing. And I'm excited also, like we're, um, we're going to see each other at WordCamp in like four or yeah. five minutes here. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be there. Yeah. And, um, and we're going to have some pretty, you got some pretty cool shirts coming. I, I got some, I got some good ones. It might, it might upset a couple of people, but we got some good shirts. Yeah. 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 Um, the timing of the timing of that. Hack, <laughs> like, oh my God. It's so perfect. <laughs> So for the chef's kiss moment. So anyway, everybody in the, in, in, uh, in the grid pain community, will have to, they'll, they'll get to see that pretty soon. So I appreciate you taking the time, Zach. I know you've got to pretty much go and get on a plane and go and see yeah. customers on the, on the East coast. And so I, I appreciate you taking the time today and, uh, have a good weekend. I'll see you a few days. Yeah. You too. See you soon. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Zach.